Sanchez crushes one. See ya! His first big league home run. A bomb! A home run into Monument Park. Gary Sanchez is serious about this. Back, track, wall. Oh no, he did it again. Can you believe it? See ya! Another home run for Gary Sanchez. That ball is. It's a beautiful evening here in St. Pete. Every day is beautiful for Gary Sanchez, and it is time for baseball as Picks 11 presents New York Yankees baseball. Tonight, it's the New York Yankees against the Tampa Bay Rays in the final game of a three-game set from Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, Florida. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Yankees baseball, along with Al Leiter. I'm Michael Kay. Yankees won two in a row. Big win last night. And before we get to talking about Gary Sanchez, Yankees got some bad news today. It's not awful, but it's certainly not good. Masahiro Tanaka supposed to start on Monday against Toronto. He will not. An MRI done yesterday revealed a slight strain in the flexor mass. Will miss his next start Monday at Toronto. He will not pick up a ball for the next five days. Strangely enough, though, Al, the Yankees say they're not overly concerned. It's not near the elbow. And Tanaka thinks he's going to pitch this year. Well, I certainly hope so. The year that uh, Tanaka's having was uh, terrific, and yesterday gave up four home runs in one inning, back to back to back. So it was a little unlike what Tanaka's been doing. He came in that game last night as the American League leader in ERA. So hopefully it's not that bad, and he's able to at least get one more start before the year's end. And that would be in the weekend at Yankee Stadium. Now, Gary Sanchez wants to play every day, and the Yankees play him every day. Why not? Another magnificent game for the rookie yesterday. You know, we keep saying and watching this young man, and, it, you know, what else do you say? I mean, this guy has been awesome. He's not just the talk of being a baby bomber and what he's doing for the Yankees. He's the talk of baseball. Last night, three for five, five RBIs, a three-run homer, single up the middle. This guy's doing it all. He really is. The numbers are so impressive in the 43 games. 19 home runs. Nobody's done that in the history of the game. And in this game here last night, an 11-5 win. That ball right there, an 0-2 fastball upstairs. I tell you, they're pitching him in all different areas, and he's hitting it hard and far. This guy's impressive. I mean, you take a look at he's done. 571 average in this series, three homers and eight ribbies. Last 12 games, 340, eight homers, 17 ribbies. And as Al mentioned, 19 home runs in his first 45 career games. No one has done that in the history of Major League Baseball. What will he do tonight? We are creeping closer to baseball here in St. Pete. Soon, it'll be lineups. First pitch, baseball next on Picks 11.
Was brought to you by Hyundai. Looking for a car with better tech and safety? Visit your local Hyundai dealer today. By Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. By your local Tri-State Kia dealers, visit TriStateKiaDealers.com to learn more. By Raymore and Flanagan Furniture, furnishing your style. By GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com for a free rate quote. And by ChevyOffers.com. Coming up next, the Yankees go for the sweep. It'll be Blake Snell for the Rays. And for the Yankees, the rookie, Louis Sessa, closing in on baseball right here on PIX11. Rays take the field. That's Blake Snell. And we'll take a look at the Yankees starting lineup that Snell is going to face. It's brought to you by Honda. Great deals are waiting at your Honda dealer. Left fielder Brett Gardner leads off, batting second, playing center, Jacoby Ellsbury. Gary Sanchez will catch. He'll hit third. Cleaning up the DH, Billy Butler. Mark Desher at first base will bat fifth, batting sixth. Back in the lineup after a sore lower back, Chase Headley will Play third base, batting seventh and playing shortstop. D.D. Gregorius, good numbers this year against lefties, hitting 308. Aaron Hicks, back in right field, bats eighth and batting ninth. He had a home run last night. Second baseman, Donovan Solano. And the young left-hander, Blake Snell, a former number one draft pick by the Tampa Bay Rays in 2011. At a high school in Washington, Shoreline, Washington. There you see his numbers. This guy's got good stuff. An up and coming, another raised pitcher coming from their farm system. Let's take a look at the pitcher scatter report brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. This is what he throws fastball, change, curveball, slider. In that order, his fastball is right around that 93 mark. Great curveball. That's his out pitch. Also has a changeup, but his curveball is a 049 batting average against so far in his big league career and loves the drop. I mean, his splits are, are a big disparity. He's got four game starts here, a 2.25 ERA at the Tropicana, and on the road, his ERA is over 10. So he likes it here in Tampa Bay. 79 and 72, that's the Yankees record. 64 and 87, that's Tampa Bay's record. Yankees two and a half games out of a wild card spot, but they've got some people they have to jump over. So some work to be done as they try to sweep this series. Brett Gardner is ready. Blake Snell is ready. And let's do it here in St. Petersburg. First pitch is a strike, and we are underway. Lance Barrett, the home plate ump. Laz Diaz at first, Bob Davidson at second, and the crew chief, Dan Iasonia, is over third. Check swing. 
And I assume you said he did not go. And the young lefty deals. And a base hit. So Gardner with a leadoff single here in the first inning. Let's take a look at the Rays defense. Brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. Dickerson in left, Kiermeyer in center, and Matuk is in right. Kurakuto, big league debut. He's at third. Miller at short, Forsyth at second. Schaefer is at first, Casale behind the plate, and Snell is on the mound. Uh, the Yankees got off to such a great start in last night's game. Three runs in the first inning. Gardner leading off the game with a base hit. And the 11 5 Yankees win. Here's Ellsbury. Jacoby is two for 18 on this road trip. This is game number seven on an 11 game homestand. A home, home road trip, should I say. They lost the first four games at Fenway. They've won the first two here at the Trop. This is the final game, and then they finish it up with four games at Rogers Center against the Blue Jays. And the 0-1. Line drive, base hit to right field. Machuk comes up throwing as Gardner will stop at second. So Ellsbury with a single. Runners on first and second, nobody out, and that'll bring up Gary Sanchez. Now very similar to last night, Michael, a base hit. A, Ellsbury had a walk. Sanchez with the single up the middle. Another great night last night for Sanchez. Two home runs, five more ribbies, 19 home runs now in 45 games. The quickest to 19 in the history of baseball. Gardner's at second, Ellsbury at first. So the Yankees, good speed on the bases. And Snell deals. Low 1 0. Tonight's power report furnished by Bob's. Everything's better with a Bob Opedic. Find out why at mybobs.com. So home runs by catchers. Sanchez is tied with McCann. Obviously, McCann's played so many more games. Remember we talked about it last night and during this series. Tampa Bay Rays not shy about facing one of the hottest hitters in baseball. Historic numbers home run wise from Gary Sanchez last night another great game three for four with a walk five RBIs. The 2-0. That one gets away runners stay put. Two and one. Well one of few pitches that we've seen Gary Sanchez swing out of the zone. This is a change up you see where it ends up it's. In the left handed batter's box on a 2 0 count. Not sure why Gardner didn't go there. It looked like it kicked away pretty far from Casale. So Snell, a highly regarded rookie pitcher, and Gary Sanchez, very highly regarded rookie catcher, matching up here in the first inning. Just underway at the trap. Snell works from the third base side of the rubber. Sets right up around the chest. And deals. Strike two and two. The right hand, that fastball, the fastball count 2 0. He threw a changeup. And again, the Tampa Bay Rays have not shy of coming in on Gary Sanchez. It's a pitch right over the top. This is a typical straight four seam fastball, but at 95, locked him up. And the 2 2. Swing and a miss. Sanchez down on strikes, one away. Well, a couple pitches he swung out of the zone, a little uncharacteristic uh, recently, at least, for Gary Sanchez, knowing it halfway through. And you got a young kid in Blake Snell throwing 95. That 2 0 changeup he swung in left hander's batter's box. That's a good pitch right there. Good job by Casale, the raised catcher, keeping that ball in front of him. Here's Billy Butler. 
Six for 14 with the Yankees. A home run and four runs batted in. Released by the Oakland Athletics in the middle of a three-year contract. And that ball gets away. This time Gardner does go to third. He'll make it. But Ellsbury stays put at first. And the backside of uh, a ball kicking away from Casale. Not sure whether Ellsbury wasn't sure where he was going. Didn't get a good secondary. Once the lead runner goes, you see that ball just kicking out. And immediately Gardner runs. And the eyeballs never got off third base. Ellsbury should be at second. That's a pass ball. But the double play is still in order because Ellsbury did not advance to second. And the 1 0. Strike. Oh. 1 and 1. Early trouble for Snell. He gets the dangerous Sanchez. Now has to navigate. Butler and then maybe Teixeira. And the 1-1. One, one. Strike one and two. Good fastball. Blake Snell showing early in this game here. 95s. Billy Butler has done a nice job since coming over. You mentioned it, Michael, the three-year deal that the A's just are eating the contract. 429 and the 14 at-bats since wearing the Yankee uniform, Billy Butler. One-two. Butler played most of his career in Kansas City. Was a doubles machine there. His nickname was Billy Doubles. Then he became a free agent, and the Royals did not re-sign him, and he went to Oakland for three years, $30 million. And it's a big outlay for the A's. They, they usually don't go that route. And then to, to release him, when he still has a year left at $10 million, very odd for a player who could obviously still play. For that franchise, too, Mike. Yeah. They got low payroll. Two-two. Swing and a miss. He chased a high fastball. Butler down on strikes. Well, the young man, Blake Snell, is bullying his neck in this right here, striking out the tough, hot hitter in Gary Sanchez. And then this is just an elevated fastball. He's shown all of his pitches in this at bat as well as Gary Sanchez. Fastball change, a curveball, and then that fastball upstairs. And this is a different fastball, way over the top, too. This guy gets a good high to low pull down. And then clearly a ball out of the zone. But again, that 95 little extra giddy up. Not able to hold up, Billy Butler. Here's Mark Teixeira. Pitch inside, one and oh. Teixeira in the final days of his major league career. The Yankees will honor him before the final home game on October 2nd. That's Sunday, a 3.05 start. Oh. And remember, all games around Major League Baseball that Sunday will start at 3.05 Eastern time. It's a great idea by baseball because this way everybody is playing at the same time when they're all going for wild card spots and things like that. So. You can't sit back and just coast in knowing that a team that you're battling has already lost. You have to play hard right from the start. It's a great idea by them. So the games on the West Coast will start at 12.05 and on the East Coast, 3.05. And the impetus behind that was with the Cardinals and the Pirates when they were duking it out. And uh, the Pirates chose to pitch Cole, Garrett Cole. They lost. The Cardinals held back Adam Wainwright. That is a great idea. But everybody showing their cards and having to play at the same time. Two one popped up. Schaefer makes the play, and Snell works out of a first and second, nobody out jam, and the Yankees don't score. So it's the Yankees nothing, and the Tampa Bay Rays coming to bat.
runs on Duncan. Logan Forsythe at second, Kevin Kiermeyer in center. Batting third, the DH, Evan Longoria. Brad Miller, the shortstop, has seven home runs against the Yankees this year. He'll clean up. Batting fifth and playing left field, Corey Dickerson. Kirk Casale gets to start behind the plate. Juniel Curacuto is the third baseman making his major league debut, batting seventh. Batting eighth and playing first base, Richie Schaefer. And Mikey Machuk is in right field. He'll bat ninth. Well, Luis Sessa will be on the mound facing that lineup. The 24-year-old right-hander be making his seventh career start. You see the 4-2 record. Six starts, 14 games. What great start out in Anaheim. Struggled a little bit since then. Let's take a look at the pitcher scout report brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. This is what he's got fastball, slider, curve, changeup. His fastball is in that 94. He can run it up to 98. Exceptional. Keep the ball in the park. No kidding. His last five starts, he's given up nine home runs. And then El Lanzador, the pitcher. This start right here, Luis Sessa will surpass Esteban Loaiza for the most starts for a Mexican born Yankee pitcher. Loaiza had six. Others, Alfredo Aceves had five, and Alfonso Polito had three starts. A little tidbit there, Michael. That's impressive. So you went back over all the starts in Yankee history. I did. And you counted that up. That's, that's, that's a well, good Well, when I saw Alfonso Polito, because I played with Alfonso, I had to include that. Good job. One and two on Forsyth. Two for eight in the first two games of the series. And the two two. Control of the ball and Forsyth has himself a single. Wow, we're gonna see this replay here. That that just looked like a little jam shot, broken bat, shallow fly ball to right. This ball got in on the hands of Forsyth. I don't know. Now this is a goofy top here. It's got a kind of a a circus-like top. I don't know if Aaron Hicks didn't pick it up off the bat. Looked like it had plenty enough hang time. We'll get a good shot here. See it in, big swing. And just a little hesitation. Huh? Falling in. Here's Kiermeyer. Shows bunt, takes outside. Well, if you're a pitcher, you definitely want that out. Off the bat from here. I mean, I, obviously, but it look, it's a little catch shallow fly here. ball. This roof is tough historically. I mean, it, you know, Metrodome was similar. The white background. There's a base hit to right field. Forsyth will stop at second. Kiermaier picks up a single. So the same deal with the Rays as the Yankees had. First and second, nobody out. Let's take a look at the Yankee defense. Brought to you by Nissan. Shop ChooseNissan.com. We've seen Hicks in right. We'll go to left. That's Gardner. Ellsbury's in center. Headley back in the lineup. Missed a couple of games with a sore lower back. Gregorius at short. Solano plays second to share it first. Sanchez behind the plate. Sessa on the mound. So here's Evan Longoria, seven game hitting streak during the streak 13 for 30. Swing and a miss. Now I'll talk about the roof. This has been around a while and it's kind of faded and a little dirty and it almost is the same color as a baseball. If it was bright white, there'd be a contrast. And if the ball was bright white, like it is coming out of a box, it'd be a contrast. There's not much here. There's a line drive right to Teixeira. They had Longoria played perfectly one away. 
Yeah, a good defense, the spray chart, and the advanced scouting at the major league level to share away off the bag. Easily getting that ball. You see where Martichera playing most right-handers. This is where you see shifts happening. Easy play for Teixeira. Well, here's Brad Miller. Four for eight in the first two games of the series. 30 home runs for Brad Miller. Rays had five home runs in yesterday's game, all solo shots, and that's why the Yankees were able to win the game. Miller had one of them. Great spot for Miller, born in Orlando, Florida, so kind of in the area that he grew up. A couple of hours away by car. Popped up and out of play. Well, maybe that's it, a little home cooking. Michael, I mean, this guy was second round draft pick in 2011 by the Mariners at a Clemson University. You look at his numbers. I mean, he was a shortstop coming up. And last year, he had 438 at bats with 11 home runs. He's got 30 home runs. He's found a home here in Tampa Bay. Grounded through for base hit. Forsyth rounds third, he'll score. The throw comes into second. An RBI single for Miller, and the Rays lead 1-0 as Kiermaier moves to third. Well, nice job of hitting by Brad Miller. He goes the other way. That ball's up, middle of the plate, but instead of trying to pull off of it, Stays with it, big hole there. You see where Didi's playing him. Way to pull, that's basically straight up where a shortstop would be standing. Easily Forsyth scoring. Putting the Rays up on the board here, one nothing. So here's Corey Dickerson. Dickerson has that big, big follow through backswing, and catchers have to be careful about being hit after a swing and a miss. Pitches high yesterday. Sanchez got hit in the ninth inning on the elbow on a backswing. Stayed in the game, and obviously not an issue because he's playing tonight. Got the fastball right by him. Boy, that's a big swing right there. Corey Dickerson showing that he's kind of a all or nothing type hitter. I mean, he's definitely swings for the downs here. 243 hitter, 22 home runs. That's not a base hit swing right there. Foul back, one and two. Although, Michael, just looking at his bio in Colorado. Now, while Colorado, no question, the ball flies. 304 batting average last year, more than respectable, 300 hitter. And then the year before, 436 at bats for Corey Dickerson, 312 batting average. Just 243 this year. And he swings and tips the ball into the glove of Sanchez for the second out. Just kept attacking Corey Dickerson. Fastball upstairs. Just couldn't catch up. Much here. It was all heater, 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 and a big swing. That's got much of the plate, but you see the elevation. Nice job, Gary Sanchez. Keep holding that baseball for the strikeout. Here's Kurt Caselli. Hitless in his last eight at bats, hitting 161. Ola. Uh, 
27 years old. Kirk DeSally of Vanderbilt. Coming out of Vanderbilt by the Tigers in 2011 draft. We're looking at this Tampa Bay Rays team and they were riddled with injuries and inconsistency by what was kind of in a lot of talks with Chris Archer being in the Cy Young talks. 1-1. One, one. At the beginning of the year, of course, coming out of spring training. Archer, would you have thought this, Michael? 18 losses? No. It's, it's hard to do, especially with his stuff. It's, it's a, you talk about a Jekyll and Hyde pitcher, Chris Archer. But he is on an 87-loss team. Well, what did Steve Carlton won, what, 25 games on a team that won 43? I think 27. He went 20. Yeah. <laughs> okay, even better. I hear you. I, I like Archer. He's pitching more. Yankees missed him. I mean, you got 188 innings, 221 strikeouts. There's Chris Archer. Built on pitching. It's always been. But this team is not Tampa Bay-like. They're third in the American League in home runs and last in hitting. I mean, just that broad stroke of, of, a, of a simple statistic. Lowest batting average and almost up in the tops in home runs. So that's a swing and miss mentality. First year manager Kevin Cash. Or second year manager. 2 2. Brown and foul, just missed Kiermeyer in foul territory. One nothing Rays. We're in the bottom of the first inning. Here at the Trop, Yankees looking for the sweep of the three-game set. Fly ball, fairly deep left. Going back is Gardner. He'll make the play for the final out. One run, three hits, and two men left. We go to the second inning. Tampa Bay one, Yankees nothing. I call up Al and say, Al, what, what are the keys to this game? Okay, I'm glad you asked, well, Michael. Well, first, it's it's sponsored, Al. They okay. brought you by your local Hyundai dealer. When I call you, that's not sponsored. This is. Okay, so pray the Rays pitch to Gary Sanchez again. Okay, we saw what's happened. I'll give you numbers on that. Work the count on Snell. This guy walks a lot of guys. A 81 in the third inning, 47 walks. I know he had a, a little trouble first inning and got out of it. And then three, Michael, was referred back to number one. Did you see that? A lot of praying. Yeah. Well, listen, we talked about it in the first game, right? When it, when Sanchez hit the big home run off Boxberger, little first pitch. I mean, he's as hot as anybody in baseball. Last night, three for five, five RBIs. That's a broken bat liner to Miller. 
to retire Headley. What is the old uh, saying? Shame on. Uh, pull me once, pull me shame once on you. Pull, pull me, me twice, two. shame on me. Right. Now listen, I'm not saying give in and just automatically intentional walk. He's not, you know, he's not batting a thousand as he struck out in his first at bat. I get it, but you know, there's a certain bravado to we can get these guys out, and it and it burned him so far in these first two games. That's going to bring up DD. Al and I would like to say hello to uh, a young lady who never, ever misses a game, ever. Watches every game on Yes or Picks 11, Florence Crater. And she is watching with the gang at the Franklin Park Nursing Home tonight. So we wanted to say hello and hope you're enjoying the game. It'll be a tough play, and Florence just got herself a base hit by D.D. Gregorius. <laughs> Way to go, Florence. Dede's here as well. I'd be come up here a little backhand. Forsyth heading towards shortstop and just overthrowing Schaefer at first. Wow, they gave it E4 on that. That's, that's really? tough. Oh, the error is to go to second. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, boy, oh boy. That makes more sense. And here is Aaron Hicks. Hicks hitting 214 overall. He's a 241 hitter from the left side. But he's hitting 160 from the right side. Batting from the right side against the lefty Snell. And, and one of the reasons the Yankees got Hicks was to replace Chris Young, who was so deadly against lefties last year because Hicks historically has had great numbers against left-handed pitchers, but it has not worked out that way this year. Now before Hicks got hurt, he really was having his best stretch of the season and you could see what the Yankees had seen in him when they made the deal with the Twins sending John Ryan Murphy to Minnesota. And then he hurt his leg and now he's back and trying to work his way back to what he was. 214 overall, seven homers, 28 ribbies. 1-1. One, one. Rip foul into the seats. You know, you look at Aaron Hicks, and certainly the Yankees, you know, a lot of decisions this winter with, you know, who goes where. And, you know, we saw Mason Williams nice at bats yesterday. And, you know, obviously with Judge going down, you're getting some additional at bats seen by guys that maybe wouldn't have as many. But the consistency aspect of getting the at bats, 52, 52 games. 98 at bats against lefties, Michael, in that 163 batting average, compared to 98 games and 197 at bats with right handed pitchers. Well, you're always going to face more righties than lefties, but, you know, when your job is to be dominant as a right handed hitter against lefties, it's got to be better than that, even if it's somewhat inconsistent, because if you're the right handed side yep. of a platoon, you can play less because there are fewer left handed pitchers. Yeah. It's the, you know, I almost equate it to Michael with, you know, the left-handed specialist. You know, that, you see the, the mix match of uh, getting righties out better than lefties. And the, the onus on that left-hander to come in and make sure you get the lefty out, because that's what they're paying you to do. Time called. Two, two. Three and two. Just watching Blake Snell, man. He comes right over the top with his fastball. All of that that release point is in that same little window. Fastball straight. It's 95, but it's it's pretty straight. And so far he's shown all of his pitches, curve, slider. That last pitch was a changeup. Four pitches. Strike three, Hicks down looking. I mean, that's just a dotted, perfect pitcher's pitch. You know, he comes with the changeup away, and Hicks takes it. Good take by a pitch that was down and away. And then this pitch right here, you see, 
the catcher. I mean, that, it doesn't get better than that. That is a major league pitch. Setting up, Casale on the corner. Boom. Hitters aren't supposed to hit those. They do once in a while, but when you have a guy with a, a young kid like Blake Snell who's throwing 95 or better, you hit corners, tough to hit. Here's Donovan Solano. And there's a the strike. Solano got in the game last, last night with all the home runs that were hit. Both teams, there's eight of them. Solano in his last at bat hit a home run. Gregorius at second. Rays lead 1 0. Foul ball the other way, and that's going to be caught by the ball boy. <laughs> Here's that last, last night right here, a little something floating down and in. Crushed it off of Ramirez. Had a good year down in uh, Scranton Wilkes Barre, over 300. The 0 2. Pitch is high, 1 and 2. Good lead at second for DD. Popped up. Right side. Matuk is there to make the play, and that'll do it. No run to hit. One error, one man left. We go to the bottom of the second. It's 1-0 Tampa Bay. Look, it's brought to you by Raymore and Flanagan, furnishing your style. Yankees two and a half out of a wild card, but they've got to jump over the Tigers, Astros, Mariners, and then obviously either the Blue Jays or the Orioles, but just two back in the loss column. Making it interesting. And here is Uniel Caracuto. And by calling up Caracuto today, the Rays are sending a very, very strong message. His numbers do not warrant being called up. He was actually on his couch. Minor league season had ended. He was on his couch. And he had to get up and get on a flight. He was thrilled. But although he hit 241 at double A AA and triple A, they felt that he went about his business the right way. Played hard, prepared the right way, prepared hard, worked hard. Soft ground ball to second base. And one of their top young players, Tim Beckham and Taylor Motter, they sent them home. They didn't want that. They, 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 Tim Beckham was up here, didn't run hard from third base, 
and didn't score because an out was made at second before he touched home plate. They sent him out the next day, so he's in the minor leagues. He's one of the better prospects in the system, but they said, go home. We don't even want you up here in September. So they want to have the right atmosphere around this team, and Evan Longoria agreed with it. He said, those guys should not be mad at the organization. They should be mad at themselves. And when they come back in spring training, don't be ticked off at Kevin Cash in the front office. Be ticked off at yourself and do it the right way. He said, that's what Joe Madden did when we turned the corner. He brought in the right people who approached their job the right way. So by bringing up Caracuto with a 241 average, they're showing those guys, we'll take guys that work hard rather than the guys with a lot of talent. Yeah, as I'm listening to you, Michael, uh, I don't know if you watched the Dodger game last night, but the Dodgers did the same thing with, with Puig. Yep. Puig was, I mean, he came on the scene. He was, you know, destined to be, you know, a star or viewed that way. So, yeah, listen, and if it's a consensus and you have your franchise player in Evan Longoria who does play hard, you know, that 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 commentary and play the game right, you know, whatever, we can get into what is that. But, yeah, of course, if that, if that was observed by those two young players, they're, they're doing the right thing. You know, look within yourself if you can't play hard every single day. And they also talk about playing smart, you know, just not hustling and not doing the right thing on the bases. And they want to kind of send up a wake-up call to these guys. I'm sure, you know, losing a month of big league pay is a pretty big wake-up call. A walk to Schaefer. Well, look at the embarrassment. Oh, I mean, yeah. You know, you're getting sent down because, you know, you're not hustling, which slash attitude. Or when you say not playing smart, now that's a whole other story because many franchises with their deemed top prospects are rushing guys to the big leagues and you know not getting enough at bats you know the, the six seven eight hundred at bats here's Mikey Mato and a strike from Sessa You know, in a franchise like Tampa Bay Rays, they're not, you know, revenue-wise, they're not, they're not going to be at the tops, to say the least. They have to have a, a minor league system that produces a lot because you're not going to be able to sign, you know, any free agent. So that's the component, scouting, player development. They've done a nice job over how many years now, Michael, with the pitching staff? Jim Hickey, the pitching coach, done a nice job. Obviously, their system, you know, promote, pr promoted from within, kind of the same mantra. up right side can Hicks get to this one yes he does to make the play for the second out I think Hicks had longer to go on that one than he did the one in the first inning yeah that might have had a little more hang tight but yes and again I don't know whether it's just getting bad jumps off the bat Here is Forsythe, who dunked that one in front of uh, Hicks and then came around to score the only run of the game so far. one nothing bottom of the second. Well, they like Logan Forsythe. You talk about a, a, a baseball player. I mean, a grind it out, plays hard. Nice job with San Diego. Getting a chance here to play every day. Fly ball, right center. And you can hear Ellsbury call it all the way from here, calling off Hicks for the final out. No runs, no hits, no errors, one man left. Let's go to the second, one nothing raise.
Well, brought to you by your local Tri-State Kia dealers. So this is the final game in Tampa Bay. Then they finish up the road portion of the schedule with four in Toronto. Then the final six games of the regular season at home, three against Boston and three against Baltimore to finish it up. Being a Baltimore, very interesting stuff that I'm sure will not please Yankee fans whatsoever. Uh, the Orioles are playing the Red Sox tonight, and they're honoring, before the game, they honor David Ortiz, his final game in Baltimore. And they, um, and this is off the Orioles' Twitter feed. They honored Ortiz. They played a highlight reel. I'll read the entire tweet so you can get what was said by the Orioles, not by me. Count 1-0 on Gardner. Outside. The first tweet was, we considered a video having some fun at Ortiz's expense. His 29 at-bats versus our old friend Brian Mattis resulting in four hits and a 138 average. The next tweet is, instead, we're playing a highlight reel of David Ortiz's home runs against the Yankees, something both Orioles and Red Sox fans can enjoy. <laughs> well, so what do you say? It's a bad idea? I mean, how is honoring Ortiz allow you or lead you to diss the Yankees? Because they're all rivals. But how does that involve the Yankees? David Ortiz ceremony. Well, would you want him to give up home runs to uh, Toronto? Well, you can. He said home runs against lots of teams. <laughs> I think they gave him a phone, right? Wasn't that the place they where gave he gave him a broken phone? Yeah, a broken phone. Was he? He went into a tantrum back in 2013. He broke the uh, visiting dugout phone as Gardner down on strike, so they gave him. An authenticated version of that phone. And they also gave him a $10,000 check to the World Pediatric Project in his name to help critically ill children in the Dominican Republic. Yankees will have a pregame ceremony. The final game, the Red Sox play at Yankee Stadium next week. It's nice. He's had a heck of a career. Ambassador of the game, likable, deserving. Here's Ellsbury. And oh. there's a strike. So you think uh, the Yankees read that tweet? Maybe they'll show Ortiz hitting off of uh, the Orioles? No, I think the Yankees will take the high road. You don't seem to think it's a big deal. I, I, in terms of the world, it's not a big deal. But if they showed highlights of a guy, like they honored a guy and they only showed home runs off Al Leiter, how would oh, you feel? Mike, it's fun. I, I see it as a fun thing. And look, if it if it's within the division and they're, you know, the Yankee-Boston rivalry, I, I don't know. I, I see it as like a, yeah, okay, so if you're a Yankee fan, say, hey, well, why only the Yankees? Right. Include, include the Blue Jays. Let them hit a home run against the Angels. Yeah, I don't know if it feels the same in Camden Yards. Swing and a miss. I mean, half the time you go down to Yankee Camden Yards, there's more Yankee fans there anyway. A few years that was the case. I think it's just fun. Poke the bear. Why? Why would you poke the bear? You have to play them three games that, that could decide your season at the end of the year. You think they care about that? I don't think the players care. And who runs these Twitter accounts anyway? Well, they're just reporting what was said. I know. Here's Gary Sanchez. It's amazing. Went. I've known you 30 years, and you've turned into Gandhi. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's in good fun. One and one. But I do know one thing. This young man on the mound, I could see why Baseball America made him the number one pitching prospect in baseball last year. Two and one. Let's see what happens here. Two one count. He's been coming at these Yankee hitters. Does Sanchez get a fastball? Ball slider slider away 
See if he executes. Two one. Ooh. Two and two. I, I tell you, Michael, I, I've, I've done a, a handful of games the last few weeks. I have, haven't seen swings like that. The changeup that was in the left-hander batter's box, the, the slider he struck out in first at bat, and then that in there. I agree. He's been patient, taking his walks, making pitchers come to him. Castro, or should I say, uh, Sanchez hit a home run off Snell at Yankee Stadium. That was in their recent start. That was uh, Gary's 12th home run of the year. Struck him out in the first, home run in the third, and was knocked out with two outs in the fourth. 3-2. And Sanchez works a walk. Good, good eye right there after that 2 1 and then swinging out the slider in the dirt. Change up, respecting Sanchez, didn't give him anything really good to hit. Time for Who's Hot? Brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Billy Butler with the Yankees is hot. Six for 15, three extra base hits, four ribbies hitting. A cool 400. He struck out in the first inning against Snell. And there's a the strike. Snell has rung up five strikeouts so far in two and two third innings. Man, either Snell has a really good move or Sanchez is saying, uh-uh, just throw home. That's nothing, Lee. And I know Sanchez isn't a isn't a stolen base guy, obviously, but when you get such a short lead, anything in the gap to the wall, there's no chance. I don't believe as the outfielder falls down to score. And the 0-2 blocked by Casale. Cuts it off before it gets into the corner. Going to third is Sanchez. The ball's cut off. So first and third for the Aggies with two outs bringing up Teixeira. Well, with that short lead, Michael, off the bat with the two outs. Good hitting right there. Billy Butler, fastball in on his hands. Able to get it by Schaefer, first baseman. And then that short lead, I was curious. Mata coming up strong. Miller ends up cutting the ball off. Been interesting how close that would have been had he not. Good job by Sanchez getting the third base. Butler's now hit safely in all six games he's played with the Yanks. He's shown up, I know, in the first game of the series, hitting fastballs in or half. Billy Butler, two doubles, both on fastballs in the first game off of Drew Smiley. Inside to Teixeira. Shows you you can't predict anything, Al. When the Yankees got Billy Butler, he had not had a live at bat, had not had a batting as live pitching in over a week after being released by Oakland. And he's done nothing but rake since he came back. One and one. So playing Teixeira a couple of days in a row, and that means Tyler Austin's not playing, and he's really been struggling and striking out a lot. And the Yankees still harbor hope to make a run at that wild card, so they feel they have to win every game. And although it's tough to walk that tightrope to give the young kids a bat, you also want to win. And Tyler Austin was striking out a lot, so 
Girardi's thinking he has a better chance with Teixeira, especially defensively. And the one-two. Two and two. Yeah, there's a certain thing that you observe, obviously, you know, with your eyeballs as a manager or coach. If a guy is young and he's getting over bats and it looks really bad in the sense of striking out a lot, you know, and you get less of a chance to put good to bats together. Grounded. Two Just foul. foul. Gary Sanchez had to jump some rope. But Dan Ayasonia quickly said foul. It was a little closer than that. Jump up. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on top of the third, one nothing. Tampa Bay Rays. Still two and two, so making Snell work here in the third. Some good at bats. Fighting off the tough pitches, that fastball in on his hands. Get that pitch count going. Oh. Two two. This one got a pitch out of the zone, way upstairs on slider. A little change up. Share a home run in his first first game of this series in his second at bat. You know, interesting comment from uh, last night's starter, Alex Cobb. He said, I essentially have two pitches now coming back from Tommy John surgery. He said, and facing a team, two games so close together, he said, I couldn't fool him yesterday. So even if you have more than two pitches, they've seen your act before. And this is the second time they face Snell in a couple of weeks. I'm sure, they went to uh, to school on him, but so far I haven't been able to get runs across. Two-two. Missed inside with the fastball, three and two. So that releases Butler at first. Uh, this is a good at bat. He's fighting off pitches, borderline on the plate. That's a good call right there. Lance Barrett, home plate umpire. That ball was inside. Three two. He walked him. Great at bat for Teixeira. That's going to bring up Headley with the bases loaded. Really good at bat. Ten pitch at bat from Mark Teixeira. Saw all of it. And then he ends up throwing a three two slider. Kind of looked like Casale got a little fooled there. I think Snell looking at the home plate umpire, Lance Barrett. Where's that? That's a strike, he's saying. No, well, he's not going to make friends with uh, with Lance Barrett. So Hickey probably saw that, came out to calm him down, give him a little bit of a breather, and now Barrett joins the fray. Yeah, that you know what, Michael, you say that, especially as a young kid. And he's gonna, this kid stay healthy. He's gonna have a nice big league career, but you don't do that, especially if the uh, home plate umpire. Most of the umpires are staring at you anyway on those close pitches because they obviously know you didn't like the call if you thought it was a strike. Here's Chase Headley, broken back, hump back line drive in the second to the shortstop Miller. Bases loaded with the Yankees. Yeah. 
inside. 1 0. Sessa doesn't mind the long wait as long as they get him some runs. He's down 1 0 right now, top of the third. High fly ball, right field. Matuk is there and puts it away for the final out. So Snell works out of a jam. No runs to hit. The Yankees leave the bases loaded. We go to the bottom of the third. With MLB.tv Premium, watch every out of market game live in HD on more than 400 supported devices and enjoy a free subscription to At Bat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv today. One nothing raise, bottom of the third. Here is Kevin Kiermeyer against Sessa. Swings at the first pitch and pops it up foul out of play. One and one. So two strikes. The threat of a bunt is gone, so they move Headley over to the right side, leaving DD playing short, alone on the left side. And the one, two. And there's nobody there. Base hit right up the middle. So Kiermaier's two for two against Sessa. The defensive extraordinaire. A good speedy runner. Covers a lot of ground. Won a gold glove. Won a platinum glove last year for center fielders. Kiermaier threat to go. He has 18 consecutive stolen bases. He's 20 out of 22 this season which is a success rate of 90.9 percent and that leads the majors with a minimum of 20 attempts. So the Yankees will keep an eye as Longoria digs in. And a strike. Well, that'll be a good tough match, right, for Gary Sanchez. 36% Gary Sanchez caught stealing. Well above Major League average. Major League average is 26, 27%. When I hear that number that you cite, Michael, you know, there's guys I play with, a lot of guys that were fast, but guys that couldn't steal a base. Oops, there it goes. Throw to second. 
in there with a stolen base. Well, there it is, 19 for 19 now for Kevin Kiermaier. Yep. Looks like the Yankees are going to see if it going to challenge it. Head down, straight steal. Ball was up just enough for Donovan Solano to have to really take the tag from a high point. I think he's out. Ooh. I think they got him on top of the helmet before his hand hit the bag. And I think the Yankees see the same thing. Watch, he'll connect with the helmet before the hand touches. So Girardi is asking them to take a look. Huh. Right there. You saw it on the helmet? I saw it on the shoulder for sure. I think this is the one that shows you got him on the helmet. Right there. Oh, yeah. Yep. Wow. We'll see if they see that the same way in New York. The play under review is brought to you by Mazda, Driving Matters. See what they say. They're about to take off the headsets. They say he's out. So a good challenge by the Yankees, and that breaks the streak of 18 consecutive stolen bases. Wow. Man, what a nice job, Donovan Solano, to get that tag. You see, it's about head high. Quickly slapping the tag, and that was it. Yeah. Top of the helmet. Well, Kiermaier has not had much luck against Yankee catchers. His last two caught stealing, this one by Sanchez, and before the streak began, Brian McCann, back in April. Oh. Two and two. Swing and a miss. Longoria down on strikes, two away. Two really good back-to-back -back sliders from Luis Sessa. Nice job. Yeah. Longoria, 32 of his 36 home runs this year were against right-handed pitching. Watch this here. The previous pitch was similar, and that's just late break. It's just the effectiveness of that pitch right there, looking like a fastball, and then just continues to go away from the hitter. Good pitch. Here's Miller, pitch outside. Miller has driven in the only run, a single in the first inning. Pretty good pitch there, a 2-0 fastball outside corner. Not getting it, Sessa. And Miller walks. Second walk for Sessa. I'm just, you know, thinking about Gary Sanchez, Michael, on both sides of the ball as a catcher. I know we keep talking about watching all the home runs and what he's done with the bat. They can get not only the offensive production, but what he's capable behind the plate and still continue to improve. Strong arm. He's got kind of Benito Santiago kind of velocity. And it'll only get better, I believe, in calling a game and receiving the ball. Dickerson takes low and inside. Dug out into the seats.
Bottom of the third, 1-0 Rays. Final game of a three-game set. Two and two. Now Sessa went right after Corey Dickerson. His first at bat just blew it by him. Fastballs. See if he does the same thing here after that swing right there. Fastball down the middle. Challenge him. Two two swing and a miss he challenged them and Dickerson strikes out no runs a hit no errors and one man left on base three in the books one nothing raise. Suki Scott and the Pix 11 News Team with breaking news, traffic, and sports. Linda Church's weather reports keep you in the know. Mornings from 6 to 9 on the Pix 11 Morning News, bringing you the heart of the story. We go to the fourth inning. D.D. Gregorius will lead off. It'll be the bottom third of the Yankee order. Tampa Bay leads the Yankees 1-0. And Snell deals. Outside, 1-0. Oh. Well, the Yankees worked a little pitch count last inning. You know, they didn't score, but they went from 33 pitches to the 64, now 65. And a base hit for Didi. He's two for two. And continues to hit lefties well. And just right through the middle of the field, Michael, I, I, I really like that when left-handers really kind of concede the turn and burn especially for somebody as as talented as this young left hander on the mound throwing 95 miles plus and that'll bring up Aaron Hicks Hicks struck out looking in the uh, in the second inning with a runner on second and one man out Snell deals. That one is cracked to center field. On the run is Kiermeyer. They got there in a hurry to haul it in as DD goes back to first. So Hicks hit it hard. But Kiermeyer usually gets most that's hit out there. Yeah, a little change up. And I'll tell you what, Kevin Kiermeyer, it's not only the distance, Michael, it's the jump. And your better outfielders, they anticipate and their first movement is quick. You see where Kiermeyer slightly right center field, making it easy. Barely getting the warning track. You know, it's that first jump. Of course, speed matters. You can outrun a baseball. Faster guys cover here's, a lot of ground. Sorry, here, Mike. Here's Donovan Solano. Uh, strike. 0 and 1.
Grabbed there by Joe Espada. Flips it into the seats. Said about Solano down at AAA. Not only did he bat 319, but he had 404 off of left handed pitchers. I know it's AAA, but that's that's a heck of a year. 131 games for the Rail Riders. Foul away, makes the seats. Solano keeps looking down at the spotter who's not giving any sign with an 0-2 count and a runner on first. Fly ball, right center, Kiermeyer is there. Two away. And back to the top of the order, and Brett Gardner. Gardner's one for two, singled and struck out. Show him the best one. You got a move, good move, and you see that Snell just lazily thrown over to Didi. One and zero. Oh. Even just for a pitcher, Michael, to, to be remotely paying attention to runner first. Didi Gregorius only seven stolen bases on the year. You see that pitch right there to Gardner, his slide step, compensating his delivery, trying to keep a runner close at first. I didn't, I didn't like it. I had managers that would call slide steps because it would change my cadence and tempo. I knew you had to do something to periodically keep the green runner, the good runners, from not easily running. But if it messes you up and now you're 2 0, now you got to come to the hitter. A few pitches now watching uh, the home plate umpire, Lance Barrett, on the corner inside or away on the righty. Away on the left, the inside of the right, he's calling more balls and strikes. There's a strike, three and one. One pitch back to Snell, and that'll do it here in the fourth. No runs to hit, no errors, and one man left on base. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning one nothing Rays.
Meredith Morakovic. It was a pretty quiet day for the Yankees here in St. Petersburg until Joe Girardi revealed that Masahiro Tanaka will not make his next start. An MRI revealed a slight strain in his flexor mass. He will not start in Toronto and will not pick up a ball for the next five days. And Joe Girardi, guys, was very quick to say that he is not that concerned about this. It is not near the elbow. It's actually more towards the wrist. But anytime you hear strain in a pitcher's arm, definitely there are some question marks there as to when and if he will make it back. All right, Meredith, let's go to uh, Al with this. Anytime there's any kind of uh, a problem and you go into an MRI tube with your best pitcher, you have to be a little bit concerned. Yeah, of course. I mean, it. Caselli cracks one to left field. It's a base hit. One hop up against the wall. Gardner will fire it into DD and a leadout double for Caselli. Yeah, I mean, there, there was obviously enough for the Yankees to do the precaution of finding out what's in there. But when, you know, Meredith, when you when I hear that, you know, every pitcher, if you were to put every pitcher in a tube after he pitches, there, it's going to show micro tears. It, that's what it does. It's a process of building up and then breaking down your arm of throwing a baseball. So you said it's a lower location or they it's, did? It's more towards his wrist. It's not near his elbow. So that's the reason why the Yankees right now aren't overly concerned. Anytime you have something with your arm, you're concerned. But kind of to what you said, Al, Masahiro Tanaka said, I'm not worried about this at all. The Yankees are being extra cautious with this, giving me a couple of days just to make sure that it's right. And he actually did not say anything during the game didn't really feel anything during the game despite the fact that he didn't have his slider or his splitter it wasn't until he was in the training room after the game that he said he felt a little bit of stiffness in that area and the training staff said whoa, whoa, whoa wait a second here you feel stiffness in your arm we're getting that checked out so it was the Yankees that said you're going to get an MRI being extra cautious to make sure there wasn't any major damage there here's Caracuto with a runner on second and he shows bunt Throw to second. Did they get Casali? Yes, they did. As Sanchez shows off the arm. He picked off Casali, who went too far on the attempted butt. There's that quick snap throw. Hey, both sides of the ball. Gary Sanchez sees Casali. One extra step. There wasn't much of a window there. Didi right behind him. Wow, what a blunder and base running mistake by a, a catcher. Tagging him on the back shoulder. Rays aren't going to say anything about it. Didi right in position, getting his foot out of the way. Slap tag. Got him. Popped up left side. Long run for Gardner. He right. can't get there. Now, something, Meredith, that I found very unusual that Tanaka said. He said, I expect to pitch again this year. Well, unless that game on Saturday against the Orioles gives the Yankees a chance to get a wild card. Why would you ever pitch him again? It doesn't make a ton of sense, and that's the Yankees' game plan right now, but they're optimistic that they're still going to make the playoffs, and I think that is the situation. If there is a reason to pitch Masahiro Tanaka that final game of the season, they will. Larry Rothschild was asked whether or not he thinks that Tanaka will be good to go after the five days of rest, and he simply said, look, I don't have a crystal ball here. We're going to have to wait and see how he feels and evaluate him on that fifth day. All right, now the other question is, let's say the Yankees going to Toronto in the first three games. Game four is Monday, and there's no Tanaka, so who's pitching that game? It could be a combination of a lot of guys in that bullpen. It could be a Luis Severino who has been used for multiple innings, but his pitch count isn't that high up there, so I don't think Joe Girardi would lean on him for an entire game. Right now, it's looking like his favorite player, Johnny Holstaff, he'll say, uh, but there, he hasn't really tipped his uh, hat as to who he would go to, and I think a lot of it depends on what happens in those first three games of that series. If he needs to go to a Severino for multiple innings or a Warren for multiple innings, that probably takes them out of contention for that start. 2-2 two -two. could not hold up. He goes around. Two down. So two way. Well, you said Johnny Holstaff. I like I like that, Barrett. Look at here. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven. Thirteen guys. Well, let's let's eliminate your closer. So twelve pitchers to choose from. The September call up baseball. Yankees have. 13 relievers and the race at 14. Oh. Al can pitchers stay healthy anymore. Uh, it just seems like the toughest profession to stay healthy. It's amazing. 
and he, he's been healthy all year and he's pitching with a slight tear in the UCL. So he made the right decision not to get the surgery, but it just seems like pitchers can't stay healthy. Right. So the concern there, you know, I mentioned, you know, about like every pitcher, there, there's some kind of teardown process. That, right. that, that's the nature of it. Your, your, your muscles and the, and, the, and the, you know, there's a teardown every time you throw. That's why you recuperate to get back to pitching. But a couple things. Yes, he had the elbow issue a couple years ago, right? That chose not to have the surgery. So anytime we talk Tanaka elbow, you get a little, you get a little nervous yep. if you're a Yankee fan, right? So that's one red flag. I think this is the issue, my broad stroke, and it's because of the detection, Michael, and because of the the careful nature of the game of protecting assets and players recognizing the importance of staying healthy because you want a long career and make a lot of money. I just see guys that perhaps a few years ago, and I'm not doing the old geezer thing, but you know, you just you, you pitched with stuff, right? Right. Quote unquote. So I, I, I think that's what we're seeing, and I know you know the Tommy John surgery has been epidemic, but just more guys are getting shut down for minor fields. We'll be back. Fifth inning, one nothing. Brought to you by Raymore and Flanagan Furniture, furnishing your style by M&T Bank, understanding what's important. By Dunkin' Donuts, America runs on Dunkin'. And by your Tri Honda dealer, hurry into your local Tri Honda dealer for great deals on 2016 models. Jacoby Ellsbury leads off the fifth, and he takes a first pitch strike from Blake Snell. Oh, well, Blake Snell. Kind of working his way in and out of some trouble, but still throwing scoreless four innings. Changing speed, showing good fastball. Slowing down a Yankee offense. You look at this series, Mike, in the first two games, Yankees had five home runs. They were seven for 21 runners in scoring position. In the first two games, 27 hits in the 18 innings. You see Danny Farquhar warming up for the Rays. Tonight, five hits, all singles. Ground ball to second. Ellsbury retired. Snell comes from a baseball family. His father, Dave, pitched uh, six minor league seasons. Highest he got was double A. 
And I'll mention Snell grew up in the Pacific Northwest and he had very disparate guys that he patterned himself after Randy Johnson and Jamie Moyer. <laughs> you couldn't get further opposite stuff wise and I guess stature too right was Randy six ten big Sanchez takes low Two and oh Sanchez 0 for one with a walk. Through four innings the Yankees have left seven runners on base against Snell so they've had their opportunities. And the Rays bullpen getting busy. Sanchez taking all the way there actually took a step toward the mound as the pitch was being delivered. Chase Whitley and Danny Farquhar. And the 3 0. He walked him. So Sanchez with a one out walk. That's one of the things that impresses me so much about him, Al. He has 19 home runs. And you think that he'd get home run happy and that he would expand his strike zone because he wants to hit the ball out. That's what's getting in fame and eventually fortune. But he's taking walks, he's taking pitches off the plate where it wouldn't be an egregious thing if he swung at that pitch. He's showing a good eye and patience. I think that's pretty impressive for a kid. No question about it. When you get hot, you know, you think every single ball that's that's released out of a pitcher's hand, you're gonna crush it. Butler chops one slowly to second. They'll go to first to get the out as Sanchez advances into scoring position. And that's why I want to, you know, I mean you talk about being picky toward Gary Sanchez in his bat, but his first at bat, he struck out uh, to Snell. You know he had a couple bad swings. I mean I can't believe I'm even pulling it out but you know it was kind of unlike what we've been watching with Gary Sanchez and now these two last two at bats he'll take his walks. Walk in the third and then that four pitch walk there. Wisen up the Rays pitchers yeah, and that this young man right here what don't give a guy as hot as Gary Sanchez a pitch to hit like they did in the first two games of the series. Mark Teixeira takes a strike from Snell. Another one clips the outside corner 0 and 2 and the situations call for it too. Obviously you know some innings you, you may have to pitch to a guy. It's early early in the game. You know you still have a major league pitcher on the mound that you think could make pitches. So you know the intentional walk idea isn't always good. Swing and a miss. The share down on strikes. No runs no hits no errors one man left. We're halfway through one nothing raise.
Saturday when the Yankees battle the Toronto Blue Jays. Coverage begins at 4 p.m. right here on New York's Home for Baseball, Picks 11. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning here at the Trop. 1-0 Tampa Bay over the Yankees. A first inning run on an RBI single by Brad Miller, and that is the scoring in the game right now. Two youngsters going at it, Sessa against Snell. Machuk takes a pitch up and in, 1-0. Pitch right there, Michael. It was the pitch that really has been helping Luis Sessa tonight. Showing a good fastball, but that slider down the way to the righty. You know, you mentioned earlier in the game what Alex Cobb said about just, you know, you, having all what his pitches are what they are. Coming off Tommy John, two starts ago against the same team, it's hard to fool hitters. And, and I couldn't agree more with, with, uh, Alex Cobb and it, you know I always thought that when you're facing a, the same lineup the same hitters especially if you didn't do well even if you did you think now I got to change and throw backwards and you know it becomes a mind game it really does and just looking at Sessa you know in his last start you know he went five and two thirds he gave up four runs and three home runs two starts ago against this Tampa Bay team so there is a love there is a kind of a mindset of you know okay I, I kind of got burned on my heater in you know you, you just think about Different ways of attacking hitters. Popped up right side to Shera. One away. You know, and for Sessa, his last five starts, it was the long ball. I mentioned about the three home runs against Tampa Bay. Eventual loss, the Yankees lost to Tampa. He's given up 14 total, but when you give up in five starts, nine home runs, you just you're not giving yourself a chance. Those are big flies. You know, there's got to be something to the familiarity aspect with pitchers facing teams so close together. Because there are a lot of managers that will not pitch a pitcher in spring training against a team that they're going to face early on in the season. They just try to stay away from it. And that's spring training. We right. were essentially in there for three innings. Right. No, I mean, just every at bat. There's no doubt about in my mind that a, a batter gains an advantage the more times they see a pitcher. That doesn't mean you're always going to get a hit, of course. But listen, you know, for, but here's an example. Okay, so you got Luis Sessa. This is what he's thrown in his in his time in the big leagues. 49% this year fastballs, 27.1% slider, 13% curveballs, and 11% changeup. That's what it is. He's got four pitches. That's just the Bayou one-two fastball. Against a good hitter in foresight. Well, that's tonight's high speed pitch, and it comes from, from to you from your local Infinity retailer, 95 miles an hour. So, Michael, to take that another level, you know, if you if certain guys got you, you know, now you're thinking, do I do I go to that well again? Do I pitch backwards? Do I show him more sliders? Hey, I didn't throw him a changeup. You know, that plays all into the to the cat and mouse. Oh. And that's that's the to me the special aspect of the gladiator syndrome of pitcher versus hitter especially when there's a history rip foul quickly 0 2 on Kiermaier who's two for two tonight Up there, 96 now. Well, Gary Sanchez went through the whole arsenal. You see his hand there saying, okay, let's start over again. Strike three, Kiermeyer down looking. Sessa with a one, two, three, 
fifth inning. We go to the sixth. Yankees trail this one, one nothing. Time Warner Cable. It's the obvious choice, people. 1 5 and 1 for Tampa Bay, 0 5 0 for the Yankees. So that first inning run holding up so far. Blake Snell did the job. Now he turns it over as Kevin Cash makes the call to the bullpen, brought to you by Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. So, young pitcher not wanting to extend him that much. Now they'll go to Chase Whitley, a guy coming back from Tommy John surgery. Former Yankee pits at the stadium and uh, the Rays' last trip there a couple weeks ago. So, this will be his third game. Chase Headley swings at the first pitch and pops it up. Long run for Longoria. Yeah, he can't get there. Now they flip flop. That wasn't Longoria. That's true. It's Kurokuto. Longoria's the D8 today. My bad. Now the Yankees are glad to see Snell go. I know a young pitcher, 88 pitches, but pretty dominant tonight. Foul away again. Outside of a few walks and a couple singles. Snell had the Yankees back and forth. Two and two. Shift is on for Headley. Three infielders on the right side. Swing and a miss. Headley's 0 for 3 after missing a couple games with the sore lower back. Uh, a little sinker run back. Two seamer. Tough pitch. Actually, that was a changeup grip. That was a hard changeup to see it out in front. Here's DD. One and oh. Top of the sixth inning, one nothing raise.
Didi pops it up. Left side, Kirikuto makes the play for the second out. So Didi is now two for three. Here's Aaron Hicks, who will get his first at bat, batting left-handed tonight. He was 0 for 2 against Snell, batting right-handed, struck out looking, and hit the ball hard to center field, run down by Kiermaier. Each team with five hits. The Yankees have left eight men on base. 1-1. One, one. Just watching Chase Whitley uh, last year had the Tommy John surgery while with the Yankees uh, taken off the rosters claim this past winter by the Rays. Rehabbed and here he is back in the big leagues. Swing and a miss. Two and two. center field a base hit for Hicks redirected a fastball up the middle and a two out single for the Yankees nice job after a change up middle of the plate fastball up to stay in middle of the field right back through the box increase in that batting average against right handed pitching Gonna be a pinch hitter for the Yankees. Coming up for Donovan Solano will be Brian McCann. Your attention, ladies. Pinching for Solano, number 24, Brian McCann. McCann had four hits last night. Four for five, four singles. Got a shot there in the dugout of Sterling Castro. Meredith Morakovic said on the pregame that Joe Girardi said there is a possibility that Castro could be back before the end of the season. Many people thought that his uh, hamstring injury was definitely it, and they'd shut him down for the rest of the season, but he's healing quickly, and I'm sure he'd like to get back out there. He's riding the bike and has not yet done any baseball activity, which will be the real test. You know, the bursts, stopping, going. Whitley deals. Ah, uh, strike. Talking about Tanaka, Michael, that'd be good for the Yankees to get Castro here. He was having try to get him back. Maybe the last few games. 21 home runs, 69 RBIs for Starlin. Line foul. Which that 21 home runs leads the team. Nothing raised. McCann pinch hitting for Solano. The 0 2. Foul back here under our booth.
popped up. Left side, long run for Dickerson. He'll get there to make the play for the final out. No runs to hit, no errors, and one man left on base. We go to the bottom of the sixth, one nothing. Yes, as they start a four-game set with Josh Donaldson and the division rival Jays. Coverage starts at 6.30 with the Chevy pregame. Then Ken Singleton joins me for the call from Toronto on Yes and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Ronald Torres takes over at second base. Solano was pinch hit for by McCann. Longoria leads off the bottom of the sixth. Pitch outside, 1-0. So it's 1-0 Tampa Bay. Red Sox and the Orioles are tied at three, top of the fifth inning. That's in Baltimore. Double barrel action in the Yankee bullpen. Severino, Tommy Lane. There's a strike. Rounded to third, Headley. One away. That'll bring up Miller, and now let's do some pitching one-on-one with you. You know, at the, the end of uh, the last inning for uh, Sessa, you know, there was a lot of shakes. Kiermaier up, and you see here, he's got four pitches. Sanchez, shake, fastball away, fastball in, slider, curve, change up, shake again, and then he shakes four more times. And Michael, we talked about this one of the games uh, earlier here, first game. And then he throws a curveball. You see Kiermaier, he's like, you got to be kidding me. Backup curveball. But I believe, and I, and I believe it because of my experience with uh, Cito Gaston as my manager in Toronto, he was such a, a proponent of pitcher shaking because it creates a, just the slightest doubt. And I think you were alluding to it because of how many times Gary Sanchez comes out to the pitcher of wanting to be on the same page and if it's frustrating or not. And, I, and I, I, I like that aspect of, of a pitcher not being a, afraid to shake. You have a game, but right there, he wanted fastball away, shook, he's going to a changeup. Now, you believe, though, that shaking off while Kiermaier was up was because they couldn't come to an agreement. It wasn't staged like Cito wanted you to do. True. Now, that, not staged, but there, there's times when you'll see, you've, you've seen this a hundred times, a thousand times, where the catcher will shake his head no, and it's just to get into the count of shake. Right. What, what struck me on there is... 
Miller with a sky high pop up or a dome high pop up. The share is there two outs. What, what, why I, I, I found that a little fascinating was that after the multiple shakes, Gary Sanchez does the okay, let's start over again, and then he shakes him four more times. He doesn't have eight pitches. I mean, you, you didn't know after the fourth shake what you wanted to throw. But just anyway, just the, the smallest out, you, you were talking about with Alex Cobb, and, you know, I only have so many pitches and sequences, all of that. I mean, that, that's what we're talking about, the difference between, you know, a, a pitcher successfully staying off the barrel of a major league hitter, you know, who could hit a ball out. Here's Corey Dickerson, who struck out twice against Sessa. The young right-hander deals. And that one is drilled to right field and deep. That ball is gone. A home run for Dickerson. And it is 2-0 Tampa Bay. Twenty-third home run of the year for Dickerson, RBI number 65. And that's been a problem for Sessa in a short time up here. He serves up a bit too many home run balls. Yeah, well, that's 10 now and six starts. Listen, two outs in a row, a curveball down from a big swing. Reminds me of a Jeremy Burnett swing right there, an old teammate of mine. You get the two outs, you get 3-0 on Longoria, and then a quick out to Brad Miller. And then you give up a solo home run. I'm sure, you know, with those two quick outs with the lefty up, I know Tommy Lane was warming up. Sally fouls it back. You know, that's one of those things as a pitcher, Mike. You know, in this day and age especially, oh, my pitch count's getting up. I'm later in the game. You know, every pitch. I, I'm not saying it was an awful pitch, but a first pitch get me over curveball. There's the pitches by inning. 23 the most. That was in the first. There's a strike, 0-2. to the third and that will do it but the Rays had a run on the Dickerson home run nobody left on base we go to the seventh inning here at the drop it is two nothing Rays by Ram trucks guts glory Ram 2 nothing Tampa Bay each team with six hits Sessa has gone six the starter Blake Snell won five Brad Miller an RBI single in the first Corey Dickerson a solo home run in the sixth, and that's the scoring in this one the Yankees have had their opportunities they've left nine runners on base but they have not been able to get the big hit so Chase Whitley in his second inning of work will face the top of the Yankee order starting with Brett Gard, pitch inside.
two and one. Three and two. Got a good pitch to hit right there on a three one count. Try to get on base. That tack on run that the Rays were able to do in such a low scoring game last inning with Dickerson. That fastball away. Kept running away the two seam action from Chase Whitley. Chop to a third. Caracuto fires low. Schaefer makes the play one away. Well, after the uh, bottom of the six, Rothschild has a talk with Luis Sessa. School is always in session for a young pitcher. Well, I have had that talk with that man right there, my time with the Marlins. One of the best pitching coaches anywhere. And I, I, I could bet he's saying something along that lines. Later in the game, first pitch curveball. It's got to be better than that. I know it sounds like second guessing, but when you're, you know, when you're in a tight game and the Rays get a run in the first inning and you're now midway through the game, give your offense a chance. Obviously, two nothing is certainly not insurmountable, but that that tack on run it stings a little harder, especially with two outs, and two quick outs. Gloria and Miller grounded to first. Schaefer steps on the bag, two away. And what I liked about Larry Rothschild, Michael, and I, you know, 96, 97, when I left uh, or I signed as a free agent after the Blue Jays, you know, there's pitching coaches that are very mechanical, very, you know, where's your arm, where's your elbow, where's your foot? But Larry, to me, gets the mental side and really gets into the understanding of what the pitcher needs to be thinking. Because, look, every single night we can watch pitchers in the big leagues and they all got different deliveries, different leg kicks to arm angles. Here's Sanchez. Whitley oh. deals a strike. One and one on Sanchez. Struck out in the first, walked in the third and the fifth. Oh. One and two. Yeah, Gary Sanchez didn't like that. That was a good slider down the way, corner. I believe it was. Let's take a look right here. See. The catcher might have pulled it up a little bit. This would be a good angle. Does it hit the corner? Mm. Tough pitch. Two and two. the pitch line down the right field line Foul. two way top of the seven that's two nothing Tampa Bay Gary has a six game hitting streak rounded to short Miller to Schaefer and Whitley works a one two three seven time for the stretch here in St. Pete two nothing Rays.
Best collectibles of the season. It's Roger Maris Bobblehead Day, the final one in the 2016 Collectible Series presented by AT&T for the first 18,000 guests in attendance. For tickets, log on to Yankees.com, visit the Yankee Stadium ticket window, Yankees Clubhouse Shops, or call Ticketmaster at 877-469-9849. Well, Joe Girardi makes the call to the bullpen, brought to you by Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, and Sessa gives them six, allows six hits and two runs, and they turn it over to another rookie, Luis Severino. And he'll face Caracuto, and a strike. Yeah, you see those numbers from Severino, much better since he's been in the bullpen. Actually, 10 relief appearances. His ERA is 0.42. Got a different look coming in as a reliever. Just not sure if you're pitching when you show up at the park. And obviously, as a reliever, it's a different mindset. You're not trying to flip lineups over and go six, seven innings, eight innings. Let's come in, empty the tank. Severino right now showing that basically fastball slider been very effective Foul. Caracuto making his major league debut tonight, looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 2. Grounded to second and struck out. And the 3 2. Strike three. Caracuto down looking. Wow. I mean, that's 97. Right down the middle. Let's take a look at around the majors brought to you by M&T Bank. Understanding what's important. How about the year Brian Dozier's having? 281, 42 home runs, 99 ribbies, 100 runs, scored 16 stolen bases. He has 40 home runs as a second baseman, and that sets a new American League record, breaking the previous mark held by the Yankees' Alfonso Soriano at 39 in 2002. Al, I got to tell you, when the Yankees were in Minnesota earlier this year, they were so down on Dozier. He just wasn't having a good year. They felt that all he was trying to do was hit home runs, that he had fallen in love with the home run. Well, you can see now it's a mutual love affair because he's got 42 of them from the second base position. 40 actually from second. Pretty amazing. For a team that doesn't have a whole lot of uh, good things to say uh, this year, right? I mean, were they last place, 364 baseball, 33 games out of first place. What a year for Dozier. Schaefer hits a fly ball to right field. Catch is made by Hicks. And especially, too, Michael. Last year was a surprise, I, I think, you know, with Molitor t coming on. And, you know, they, they exceeded their, I think, most people's uh, thoughts on the type of year they had. And then I think as a result of that, this year became, well, maybe we can compete. Not even close. Terry Ryan lost his job because of it. Here's Mikey Matsuk and pitches outside. One and one. Two. Wow. I mean, that's just good old country hardball right there. <laughs> He's just coming right at the Rays hitters upstairs. No chance. 
98 miles an hour. And the one two. Bottom of the seventh, two nothing Rays. Ninety nine just missed off the corner. I know that's our gut on the gun out here, Michael. Hundred miles an hour. I mean, that is just gas. Oh, that looked like he got the corner. Point. And the three two. Spoiled that one. I mean, there, this is an example right here this inning of like. Severino's stuff as a reliever compared to a starter. Yes, he showed that plus velocity closer in the upper 90s, but this is 98, 98, 99. Strike three right down the middle. He throws a slider, and Machuk is down looking, and the Rays go down in order, and we go to the eighth. That brought to you by your Tri State BMW centers. So Detroit wins the first game 9 2. They scored six runs in the ninth to blow it open. And they're leading the second game, top of the fourth, 2 to 1 over Minnesota. Boston leads Baltimore 4 3, bottom of the sixth. And the Angels over Houston 2 0, top of the fifth inning. Billy Butler leads off against Chase Whitley, who deals a strike. Whitley, two scoreless innings in relief of Blake Snell. And coming out for the third inning. And he's down 2 0 here in the eighth. And a strike. You know, we watch Severino, who looks so dominant out of the bullpen. And I just wonder what the thought process is going to be with him. Because Al, I'd be loath to give up on him on him as a starter. I mean, the Yankees are going to be a little short on starters next year. So yep. either they're going to have to trade for starters or use their young pitchers in those roles. And I, this guy's got great stuff. I agree. I agree with you, Michael. I, I think it's just fun to watch him do what he's doing, coming in at 99, 98 miles an hour. Base hit for Butler, who's two for four. Al, if he pitched like that as a starter, he couldn't go six innings? Well, I mean, I, listen, the, 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 it, the taxing element to having to throw, I was going to say 110, 120, but that doesn't happen anymore, 100 pitches, but it's more of the mindset, Michael, of like right there. We just saw a guy that was coming in having fun, yeehaw, gas at 98, throws a 3-2 slider, rings up a guy. So it's all max, max, max. You can't do that as a starter. 
I, I don't believe, not, not, not for 30 starts. You know, back. You know, maybe a month, you know, just max, 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 but your arm and your body and all of that, there's a breakdown element to it. What he's doing as a star, as a reliever, Michael, he, you know, when he started, he was fastball slider change. He'd cut the ball. He'd sink it a little. You know, he, I haven't seen any changeups coming out of the pen. I'm sure he's thrown some, but I personally haven't seen him coming out of the pen throwing changeups. And that was part of his 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 ammo ammo for as a starter to be, you know, have it three pitches. Well, that's why they sent him down to work on that change. But that's been shelved as he works out of the bullpen now. Meredith has more on Severino. Well, Luis Severino has told me several times coming out of the bullpen, Al, kind of like you mentioned, just so much more adrenaline. He realizes he can be aggressive. He attacks hitters, especially early in the count. I asked him, why can't you translate that to life as a starter? And he said he's tried. He does believe in going down and starting that he was a little bit more aggressive, but it's still something he needs to work on as far as long term and the Yankees plans. Luis Severino will be the first guy to tell you he wants to be a starter. He believes he can be a capable starter. And even when they put him in the bullpen, the Yankees said, as of now, the plan is still to keep him as a member of that starting rotation. So I think you'll see him coming into spring training trying to work up his pitch count as a starter. I mean, there are guys that come in and throw max effort as starters. I mean, they throw 100 miles an hour. I mean, Nathan Avaldi, who obviously got hurt, but threw 100 miles an hour first to the seventh inning. All right, but... but Listen, I, I, I hear you, Michael. And, uh, I mean, we could throw out a Scherzer or a Verlander, you know, when, when throwing 95 to 100. 2-2 two -two to Teixeira outside. But I, I think, Meredith, you know, your your conversation with Severino, th this is part of the learning process, right? I mean, you're, you're we're talking about young pitchers, young players. You know, for a guy to come up to the big leagues as he did two years ago, it was very exciting for Yankee fans to see the prospect of what Luis Severino could do in a full year. Pulled the string and to share a way out in front. He goes down on strikes. Yeah, a few four, actually four changeups in a row from Whitley. This changeup is just out in front. Good action run away from. But Severino's 22 years old. I mean, you talk about learning curve. There's a changeup. Good circle changeup. Not only was it eight miles an hour slower, but you see the ball run away from Teixeira. I, I get it. I, I, he's a starter for me. I make him figure it out. But to max effort, no, you, you can't. Not sustain it over 30, 30 plus starts, Michael. Which is the importance of that third pitch. And I, and I said it about the first game of this series with Pineda. When he gets, has conviction and belief in his changeup, his life will be easier as a pitcher. Because it's not just going to be fastball, slider, slider, fastball, three sliders. You know, you got to have that other pitch if you're going to go six, seven innings and be a legitimate front end guy that correlates with your stuff. The 0 1. Headley fouls it away. It just seems so odd because when he came up last year and was put into the rotation, he, he pitched very well as a starter. But something was lost in the translation making the team out of spring training as a starter. He just wasn't the same, not even close. The stuff worked last year. The 0-2. Grounded foul. Well, you know, now now we're on a, a different conversation of, you know, the expectation of a guy that you're coming to spring training after 2015. You're right, Michael. Severino, 11 starts, 2-8-9 ERA. You know, impressive across the board with his numbers. Less hits than innings. Walks were relatively down. The 0-2. And Michael, you were talking about Severino early in the season. It was kind of twofold, and it started with the fact that his slider wasn't quite as sharp as it was at the end of last year when you saw him come up. That forced him to throw that fastball a lot, and he wasn't locating well with that fastball. With the mistakes became uh, came the drop of confidence with Severino, and while it didn't affect him the first, second, or maybe even third start, as it continued to snowball, he said after the fact when he came back up here that that was a little bit of an issue. Headley looks at a called third strike on a fastball, and that will do it for Whitley as Kevin Cash is going to bring in a pitcher to face D.D. Gregorius. Runner on first base, two outs. Yankees down 2 nothing here in the eighth.
Ptolemy to pitch against D.D. Gregorius. They play behind Butler at first, but not that far behind, so he can't get that huge of a lead. Ptolemy deals. And D.D. swings at the first pitch and lofts it to left field. Dickerson is there, and that will do it. Here in the eighth of the Yanks, no run to hit, and one man left. We go to the bottom of the eighth. It's 2-0 Rays. Land Rover above and beyond. So the Rays have six hits. The big hits, Brad Miller had an RBI single in the first inning. And then Corey Dickerson, a solo home run. And that came in the sixth inning. And that's the scoring. It's 2 0 Tampa Bay. And Logan Forsythe takes a strike from Luis Severino. He came on and pitched the 1 2 3 seventh inning in relief of Luis Sessa. Count 0 and 2. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Gas upstairs. Three strikeouts in an inning and a third for Severino. Wow. Impressive, Michael. I mean, just attacking this fastball, elevated upstairs at 98. The previous pitch was a real nice slider. I mean, the difference between a pitcher believing what's coming out of his arm and the confidence that absolutely he should be beating his chest and justifying it, as opposed to, you know, struggling. Kiermeyer lines one to left field. It's a base hit for the race center fielder. He's three for four tonight. So here's the D.H. Evan Longoria as the Yankees try to keep it right here at 2 nothing. They'll have Hicks, Torres, and Gardner coming up in the ninth inning. And there's a slider strike, 0-1. Rounded to third, Headley Fields goes to second one on to first. It's a double play. So a 5 4 3 double play. Can the Yankees rally in the ninth? They trail 2 0, looking for a sweep.
box score brought to you by Land Rover above and beyond. No RBIs here. Yankees have not scored a run. Two singles for Butler, two walks for Sanchez, a couple of singles for Gregorius. No extra base hits, just singles. Seven singles, and they've left 10 runners on base. So Colome, who got the final out of the eighth, is going to try to get the final three outs to nail this down and salvage the final game of the three-game set for Tampa Bay. Hicks will start it off. Trout it up the middle and through for a base hit. Good start to the ninth is Hicks with a leadoff single. A couple of bats against right-handers, two for two in his last two at-bats, singles. After Blake Snell stymied it to 0, 0 for two with a strikeout. Up the middle, broke his bat. Good start here in the ninth. Now, Girardi has Mason Williams, a left-handed hitter on the bench, electing to stay with Torres here. And the pitch outside. This is Torres' first at-bat. Solano started at second. McCann pitch hit for him in the sixth inning with a fly ball to left field. And then Torres took over in the field and now will bat. Fly ball, right field. Machuk is there, and he'll put it away for the first out. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the New York Yankees and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. Quick conference between Casale and Colome. One guy coming out of the Tampa Bay Rays pen all year has done a great job. Colome, 34 saves, ERA under two. Gardner is one for four tonight. Singled in the first, struck out in the third, rounded back to the mound in the fourth, and grounded the third in the seventh. Hicks leads off from first, held there by Schaefer. And a strike from Colome. Each game is so big for the Yankees as the games wind down. They've won the first two games of this series. But at this point, you can't be thrilled about taking series. You've got to keep winning every game you play. And they're down 2 nothing here in the ninth inning. Nice block there by Casale as Gardner skips rope to get out of the way. Yeah, they really just weren't able to get much going tonight. In the third inning, Blake Snell got in a little trouble couple walks and a single but was able to get out of it seven singles are all your hits now eight chop slowly toward first Schaefer flips to column a and they get the sliding Gardner for the second out That's a nice play all the way around. You got a pitcher running to the bag. First baseman going toward the pitcher's mound. Smart move. A little underhand shovel pass. Watch here. He spins around and ends up making a nice throw. And for the pitcher in Colome to get the, to the bag, bang, bang, and a good speedy runner at Gardner. That's a good play. In a game like this, big play in the game. So the Yankees down to their final out here is Jacoby Ellsbury. Jacoby is one for four. He's singled in the first inning. The Yankees had runners on first and second. Nobody out in the first inning, but couldn't get a run in. Kind of set the tone for the evening. Colome trying to get the final out. Hicks leads off second. Check swing. The ball gets away from Casale, and that allows Hicks to go to third. Uh, great defensive play getting Gardner and also now with the two outs you got Gary Sanchez on deck Ellsbury can get on base he didn't miss that by a foot you see Casale not able to keep it in front of him 
curveball down the dirt, some kind of breaking ball. That was a wild pitch. So 0 1 on Ellsbury. Rip foul. As the Yankees down to their final strike now, 0 and 2. After the game, the Yankees will head to Toronto and begin a four-game set tomorrow night. Looking for a sweep here in Tampa Bay. Hicks at third, two men out. Top of the ninth inning, two-nothing Rays. And the 0-2, way high, one and two. A little show pitch right there from Colome after cutter, cutter, cutter. Fastball way miss. Tells me he's wanting to show that pitch to get back to the pitch he thinks he can get him out on. That cutter in on Ellsbury's hands. And the one two. Lined into center field. Kiermaier coming on. He makes the play, and the Rays win this one by a score of two to nothing. So in the ninth for the Yankees, no runs, a hit, no errors, and one man left on base. And the Yankees plays pretty good pitching. Six innings of two-run ball by Sessa, and two innings of shutout ball by Luis Severino as the Rays salvage the final game of this three-game set. So Al, you know, winning series yep. is a nice thing, but right now the Yankees have put themselves in a situation by getting swept those four games in Boston. Sometimes winning series is not enough. Yeah, well, I mean, it, you know, the numbers start drying up on you, right? You got uh, 10 more games after this, four uh, Toronto, three Boston, and three Baltimore. So, uh, yeah, listen, you win the first two games. I, I was impressed with Blake, Blake Snell. I really was. He did a good job. He really only got in a little, a little spot in the third inning where he got a little wild, but tough on the... Yankee hitters and then Whitley did his job. You know, after looking at the first two games, my God, I feel. I mean, they they scored 16 runs in the first two with 27 hits, and then tonight just was stymied. Yep, they had the opportunities, but they left eight base hits and 11 runners on base. So it's hard to get it done that way. As they get shut out and they lose this one two nothing. So much more to come here from Tropicana Field. We'll wrap things up as Tampa Bay beats the Yankees two nothing.